A lot of my work is about the intersection of the spectacular and the everyday. Um, so fragile printed postcards that convey a message from a faraway place like these, or patterned wallpaper that depicts an exotic land. Um, and the way this sort of fragile domestic production tries to capture something of the profound and the awe-inspiring and the unfamiliar. I became interested in explorers and specifically explorers who got lost during the course of their journeys because of the way their stories sort of um, encompass both the grandeur of nature and then this human striving to understand and enter it and then on the other hand the poignancy of this failure and this, the, the, the fact of their disappearance. I'm Everett Roos who vanished in Utah um, in 1934 when he was 20 years old. He was sort of a nature lover and would go on these solo wilderness hikes um, and it was on one of these that he disappeared. This one is from Boss John Otter, um, who is an artist who disappeared in 1975 while um, embarked on an art project called In Search of the Miraculous. Um, and he, he was going to sail from uh, Massachusetts to England in this 12 and a half foot boat um, and he disappeared during that journey. And then this one is um, from Percy Fawcett who disappeared in 1925 while in the Brazilian Amazon um, looking for a, an ancient lost city that he called Z. Um, and so all of them were on some sort of quest for transcendence or deeper meaning um, and there's this lack of resolution. We don't know if they found it or not. I was thinking about um, a sort of Edenic destination for all of these lost explorers and so that's what they were here is. This idea that the explorers have arrived somewhere, um, we just don't know where it is. Thinking of the viewer as this very mundane familiar tool for magnifying the landscape, sort of tool of perception to help us see better and clearer and larger. Um, and in this case, when you look through the viewer, you don't see this painting at all. You see a stereoscopic photograph of the ocean, and it's just waves crashing. And so I wanted to suggest that the island had disappeared, and so that when you look closer, things have vanished, and they're not actually what they seem. There's moth moulin, which, it, which grows natively in Europe and parts of Asia, but is a weed in many US states. Um, so there's a way that all these plants that don't really belong together are coexisting in the painting. An angel trumpet, which is a subtropical tree, this is a passenger pigeon, which was once one of the most abundant birds in North America. The last known passenger pigeon died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. These wallpapers that I'm looking at that, that um, were inspiration for this painting often depict exotic lands, um, imaginary places or far-off places. That approach to, to decorating a domestic interior with things that come from the outside and from unfamiliar zones. Um, this idea of bringing the, the unknown and mysterious into the home and, and this sort of um, breakdown of domestic boundaries, bringing the outside world in and um, the way places I've never been to, like the images in this slideshow, exert this power over my imagination. Um, so the slides are projecting onto mist from an industrial strength humidifier that's hidden in this box. Um, and I was thinking about smoke and landscapes going up in smoke and the sort of 
that metaphor and also the effect of the image blurring as the smoke dissipates um, and sort of being this fleeting, tenuous thing. Um, so the, the mist is just water and it, it seems to fit in better with this sort of message about cycles and nature and ecology.